For the derivative of the inverse secant function, we're going to start with y equals secant inverse of x. So x is equal to secant y. And using an implicit differentiation, we get 1 equals secant y tan y times derivative of y. So the derivative of y is equal to 1 over secant y tan y. To set up our triangle, we need to know that the range of values for y goes from 0 to pi divided by 2, not including pi divided by 2, and ends at pi. So all our y values are going to be positive. We know that our hypotenuse is equal to x and our adjacent leg is equal to 1. So the opposite leg must equal positive or negative x squared minus 1. So we know that our secant y is always going to be secant of a positive number which can either give us a positive x value or a negative x value. So let's say secant y is positive. Then our angle y must be less than pi divided by 2. So our hypotenuse is x greater than 0. And then our adjacent leg is still equal to 1, and our opposite leg is x squared minus 1. However, if we chose a y value in this range, or in other words, if we chose a y value greater than pi half, then secant of y would be negative. So using our knowledge of polar coordinates, we would have a hypotenuse that was negative. So we would have an x less than 0. And in this case, our other leg would be negative x squared minus 1. So now using our two possible triangles, we're going to try to rewrite secant y tan y. So in our first scenario, where x is greater than 0, our secant y would equal x, and our tan y would equal x squared minus 1. And this is for x greater than 0. Now if x were less than 0, our secant y, x, would still be, yeah, our secant y would still be x, except our tan y would be negative square root of x squared minus 1. Notice how these two expressions will give you the same value. In summary, we can just rewrite this as the derivative of y is equal to 1 over the absolute value of x times the square root of x squared minus 1. So that's the derivative of the inverse secant function.